Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, joined by Travis Nilsson of Dev Tips. Yay. We are here in a hotel in Anaheim <laughs> at VidCon, so I thought I would stop and uh, get to talk to Travis a little bit about some of these developer life questions that we have. And in the last video, we Dev talked... Uh, yeah, Dev Life. Dev Life. <laughs> in the last video, we talked a little bit about... Uh, jealousy or seeing other people's work and feeling overwhelmed. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about sort of something that could go along with that in a little bit of a way where how do you stay motivated to continue to grow and to advance as a developer designer in this sort of digital, uh, this world. So I guess the, the main question is, is when you have, uh, you know, code to work on whether you're at a job and you don't get to pick your projects mm -hmm. or you're doing your own thing how do you stay motivated to not only learn the new stuff but to even complete the work that you already have to do like you you have a mountain of stuff to yeah, do yeah yeah uh man i think that was interesting that you said whether you're at a job or doing your own projects because i i always all, all of my coding stuff is always my own. Yeah. And so, and I always think like, oh yeah, I'm talking about my own project. So how, you know, like the, the perspective of somebody who has to go to work yeah. and code and doesn't yeah. like coding, I'm unfamiliar with that kind well, of scenario. Well, maybe not like coding, but uh, they... Not what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because like normally I would answer that by saying like, like being motivated comes from a few different things. And there's like a few different kind of elements in the pot. Um, one of them is just cadence, right? Mm -hmm. So if you if you are, are working on something and you've got a good momentum going, that momentum can carry you pretty far. Yeah. Um, the second one is is how much you believe in the project, right? If if it's doing something that aligns really well with your personal values, for example, one of my personal values and something I, I really um, am passionate about is, is is doing like social work and like mm -hmm. in like like helping. Uh, uh, disaster relief and things like that. Okay. Yeah. And when I'm able to take the the money that my um, community provides through Patreon and, and donate it, or or do something good with it, um, or uh, or do a project that does benefit other people, um, and in terms of making my videos, um, helping people to increase their technical skills so they can become more employable, mm -hmm. that that really that really aligns very well with my, my personal values are. Yeah, yeah. And it's very motivating to me to, to do that and also to see the results, right? So like when I get an email of somebody saying, Travis, because of the work that you've done, X, Y, Z happened and therefore now I'm you know, a happier person or my life is a little bit better. Like that, that's really gratifying. Yeah. And uh, it serves to motivate me for, to do more and to be better at it. Right. Yeah. And I totally get that. When, whenever uh, the stuff that you're working on is so closely aligned with the things that are deeply ingrained with you, yeah. it's not like working. It's like you're, you're just doing it because you like to do it and that's how it is. Right. But let's say, yeah. let's say here's the situation. You've been employed yeah, yeah. by Comcast. Right? Uh huh. I don't know what your feelings are on comedy. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, let's say you're employed by somebody oh, that. I was like, yeah. You're, you're, not like, a, you're like, that's the devil, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So you're employed by somebody you might not, you know, you're working there. Yeah. It's a job. It's your job. It's, it's, it's a good opportunity. But how do you, how would you stay motivated when the coding that you're doing or the work that you're doing doesn't align? You don't, and you're not allowed. Yeah. To make it align. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, Got to put food on the table. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, two, two kind of insights. I, I don't mean to imply that I've never had a job that I didn't like. <laughs> I was just thinking of coding, and, and professionally I'm a designer, so I've never coded for right, somebody sure. I didn't like. But I have had pr like creative jobs. I have designed jobs that I was unhappy at you know, for a long period of time, and I was stressed out, overworked, not happy. I've, I've been there. What are uh, kind of two insights that maybe I could share that help help to preserve motivation throughout there is um, number one is take delight in the things that you do do that you enjoy and that, that you can accomplish, whether it's as simple as learning a new skill um, or even making a close friend, you know, there or something like that. Yeah. I mean, you may not like 
everything or maybe even the majority of the things about your position, but you do have a job and that's good. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. And there, there are, you know, there, there are bright points in there somewhere that mm -hmm. you can say, like, look at, look at, you know, despite all this darkness, something as good is coming out of that. The second thing um, is that I noticed that when I was employed by somebody that I did not feel in control of my own creative destiny, uh, I did side projects like you would not believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I, the only way I could remain creatively sane is to invest my emotions that was not being fulfilled into other work that was fulfilling to me at the time. And so I've, I've never not had side projects, never, never not had side projects. Mm -hmm. And in fact, every job that I've had, every new employment offer that I've received has been a direct result of my side projects and yeah. not my employer's work. Yeah, and that, and that resonates with me mm -hmm. a lot, right? When I was doing work I didn't like or I wasn't totally dedicated to, uh, the motivation to advance in coding came from these side projects. Right. I, I built a tool to help me record my, my dance schedule, my dance uh, practices and stuff like that. I, I built that tool for myself. And that allowed me to learn new things and get excited and do all mm -hmm. of these things mm -hmm. and be motivated to be a better programmer without uh, being without my, my job specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing I can add to any of that is is um, find the aspects of the project that you're working on that you do have control over and take delight and control and experiment in those areas. For yeah. instance... Uh, I I feel like I was doing I was at a job before and it wasn't super rapid. We were working on like a new site maybe every month. The sites weren't anything special. Um, I did not love them. I did not love the designs. I didn't have control yeah. over that. Right. Yeah. I was just the 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 monkey typer. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> just making these things just build them out. Yeah. And. I took every single one of those sites as an opportunity to do something new. The first time I used Gulp was uh, as a build tool for a site that probably did not need a build tool. Sure, I sure. used it because I wanted to, to learn something new in this project that otherwise I wouldn't feel great about. Uh, SAS, the first time I used SAS, the first time I used Stylus, any of these things, uh, they were all... Uh, they were all the result of a mm -hmm. project I wasn't psyched about working on and tried to turn it into something that I wanted to be psyched right. about yeah, working that's on. that's great. And every single time, you feel better about that project mm -hmm. when you're done. I couldn't tell you which individual project I learned SAS or Gulp on, but I can tell you at some point in this job of projects I didn't like, I learned all this stuff, you know? Absolutely. Um, th there's there's a few great things in there. Number one is that you, you have control over your own happiness. Right. And if you're not satisfied with what you're being given by like the overlords, you know, right, yeah. by the managers, right. give yourself things, you know, like, like exactly how Scott was describing. And secondly, when you take those side projects or when you take those like, you know, you're, you're like magnifying the, the, the benefits, like the, the opportunities there, when you do that, it, it cycles back to your employer and creates value for them. Mm -hmm. and, and that comes back to you in terms of respect, opportunities, money, like different ways your employer shows appreciation for you because they realize that like, hey, you know what? You're going the extra mile. You're going beyond what I hired you to yeah. do. Yeah, and, and it could even be something as small. Like I know some people are in a situation where they're in a legacy code base. They're working on boring stuff within this code base that exists. They can't just go and add some new technology to it. Sure. So I think uh, something for those people would be to find exploration where you can. If your company doesn't have like a code style guide, let's say they don't have a JavaScript style guide, man, you could work on, uh, on on researching and exploring different JavaScript style guides and then applying that. You could go over and refactor your code or try new things or figure out new ways to do this stuff. But like in the same regard, you need to find ways to make what you're doing exciting for mm -hmm. you. Because if it's exciting, you're going to want to do it. If you want to do it, you're going to get better. You're going to be motivated. So you need to bring excitement in and you need to genuinely be excited about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, just in short, like it's never ever is it in your contract that your employer is responsible for your own creative health that entirely falls upon you. You cannot blame anybody else for your own 
creative health, yeah. right? So you have to take care of yourself. You have to challenge yourself in new ways, just similar to like your, your, you know, your physical health, mm -hmm. right? You have to exercise. You have to challenge your body. You have to provide it with good fuel. So you have to be keep on reading. You have to keep on putting good input into your creative health. Um, and you are re completely responsible for it. Nobody else in the world is responsible for your own creativity and, yeah. your, and your own f creative fulfillment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, challenge yourself, push yourself, motivate yourself, take responsibility, take accountability. That's right. Uh, do all that stuff, and and you will be motivated, and you're gonna like the output better. Your employees are gonna like the output better. You're gonna get better jobs, and it's all going to right. to come back. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I think that that that's as good as it gets. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a, a really great. Um, really great points on, on motivation yeah um so as always uh this is scott and i'm joined by travis here thank you you can say your own name sorry i'm travis here <laughs> <laughs> i'm uh, travis from dev tips yeah channel. travis from dev tips if you aren't subscribed to dev tips uh you could go ahead in the related channels of level up is in the side is right there's the little yellow square it says dev tips click it subscribe he's got a lot of great content for both developers and designers good good stuff i think so check it out high quality video tutorial content and some other stuff too a mm -hmm. bunch of good stuff so scott's actually joining me on a few videos that i'm doing over there right now so if you want yeah. more scott i know where to get them yeah right there <laughs> yeah thanks everyone awesome so if you want to help support level up tutorials head over to store.lo so if you want to help support level up tutorials head to store.leveluptutorials.com and either purchase a subscription where you get access to videos for early or some extra content <laughs> that sort of stuff or you can just purchase series outright some of which are only available at store.leveluptutorials including a really awesome nine hour long react native series and a css animation series that i have spent a long time producing so Check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.